Good morning, New Life, uh, or maybe good evening. I'm not sure exactly when you're uh, tapping into doing these devos, but I want to continue today in our study of Acts, and we're going to take a look at Acts 21. And as I look at Acts 21 and all the way through the remainder of the book of Acts, it reminds me of the wild, wild west. Um, it is uh, like an old western. It is filled with drama. There are good guys, there are bad guys, there are ambushes, there are rescues. Uh, so it's just, a, it's just a fun, unique adventure just to read, especially the life of Paul, as uh, his ministry and mission is now really zeroing in what his really calling is, which we'll talk about that in just a minute. But I want to highlight just one principle uh, that sticks out to me in Acts 21, and it's simply this. Obedience to Jesus is never easy. We look at the beginning of Acts 21 that uh, even Paul's friends and loved ones uh, were in disagreement or didn't understand why he was insistent on going to Jerusalem. And these were not his enemies. These were very close, dear friends, just like previously in Acts 20. Uh, he'd had just an amazing ministry uh, with the uh, church of Ephesus and he met with his elders there for the last time and they were just so uh, worried and concerned and trying to persuade him not to go to Jerusalem for fear of his life. And then in Acts 21 the same situation happens with another group of followers. But uh, Paul is convinced and we read in Acts 21 verse 13 Paul answers them who are trying to convince him, don't go to Jerusalem. He says, I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. So sometimes obeying Jesus, there can be uh, uh, disagreements or even misunderstanding from our loved ones or our friends. And then as Paul finally enters into Jerusalem, there are false accusations and rumors flying around uh, about Paul. And this, when you're obedient to Christ, this may happen. There may be rumors, there may be false accusations. Uh, to highlight really what was going on as Paul enters into Jerusalem, uh, the Jewish leaders began to uh, tell the crowd that Paul, as a follow of Christ with a Jewish background. Paul's totally disregarding the Jewish laws or the Jewish customs. Paul never said that. Uh, he testifies, especially later on in the book of Acts, he testifies and gives literally his heritage, his lineage, and his consistency as not only a Christ follower, but obeying the Jewish law. And then another main rumor that really upset people was that Paul had brought a Gentile into the uh, inner courts of the temple, which was uh, totally forbidden. Paul had never done that, never would do that. But in his obedience to follow Christ, there were rumors and false accusations, so much for, so much, so much that the rumors got out of hand that it brought about a third obstacle to Paul's obedience to Christ. And that was difficult, painful, circumstances, even personal suffering. Because look at uh, verse 30 in uh, chapter 21. The whole city was upset and the people came running from all directions. They seized Paul, they dragged him from the temple and immediately the gates were shut. And while they were trying to kill him, news reached the command of the Roman troops that the whole city of Jerusalem was in an uproar. Paul had come back to Jerusalem because he knew it was the Lord's will. He was being obedient and a riot breaks out. Now why was Paul so persistent and so just spot on in his obedience to Christ? Well, I think one of the most uh, significant verses that we've already read about uh, way back in Acts 9 at Paul's Damascus Road conversion uh, the Lord speaks to Ananias in verse 15. He says, go, this man Paul is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and to their kings and to the people of Israel. And I will show him much. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. 
Paul instinctively knew that he was going to be a chosen vessel by God, not only to reach his own Jewish people, but on a much larger scale, his passion, his drive, his calling, and his obedience to Christ was to reach the Gentiles. And then at the middle of Acts 21, you see a very significant person, a commander, uh, it says in the scriptures, a commander of a, uh, uh, Roman troops. He actually was a commander of around a thousand troops. He realizes that a riot's breaking out and he goes investigates and he actually has Paul arrested to know what's going on. And he actually becomes very significant as a Gentile to protect Paul, actually uh, put him in prison away from the crowd. And uh, God's promise to Paul that you will be a vessel to reach the Gentiles and their kings. And at this point in Acts 21, Paul begins a process where he is allowed not only to speak to the key Jewish leaders in Jerusalem, he actually is able to interact with two Roman governors, the king of the Jews, and then finally he is allowed to appeal to Caesar and go to Rome. Paul just had this amazing promise from God, even though he at times was literally almost tortured to death, beaten to death, all these trials, but he knew in his faith that the Lord had a, mis had a mission for him, not only reach the Jews, but reach the Gentiles. And I think today as we close, I think there's a, a couple of application questions uh, that I challenge myself with. What, it, what would it look like for you today to be as committed as Paul? In your walk with Christ, in your relationships, in your job setting, uh, in your community, what would it look like today if you were that committed? Or another way of asking, what kind of sacrifice does God want from you and me today? As we interact on the job site, uh, at school, in the neighborhood, what kind of sacrifice is God asking of me today? What kind of commitment? And then one other final question to maybe help us in recognizing that our obedience to Jesus is never easy. How do you think God would like you to show your faith in him today? How do you think you can be obedient today in whatever arena you're in? And how can you show with the same tenacity and commitment that, the Paul, that Paul shows us? Thank you.